The story begins at an unnamed worksite on an ordinary sunny day. The site manager is angry about the absence of a diver who was called in on another important matter. Due to deadlines, he decides not to wait and invites all present workers to complete the work for a separate amount. Of all the workers present, only one thin guy volunteered to do the work. The person who volunteered to dive is asked whether he can cope with the task with such a frail body. To the doubts of his superiors, he only answers that the money will not earn itself. After some time, the belay workers begin to doubt whether the diver is suffocated or is simply faking it. One of the workers notices a malfunction of the device for communicating with the diver, which is why he hastily shouts for him to be pulled out. Without thinking twice, the insurance workers pull him out of the water. Having emerged, the diver takes off his mask and reports the completion of the task. The head of the facility, giving the fee, is surprised at the guy and says that money is more valuable to him than his own life. This is how we meet a guy named Eugene, who, at 18 years old, is ready to go to great lengths for the sake of money for his sister's treatment. As he left, he thought that it would be great to receive such amounts every day. After this thought, he immediately began to bleed, which made him even have to stop. All this was seen by a mysterious stranger, whose clothes did not make it clear who exactly was standing in front of the main character. The stranger began the conversation very abruptly, saying that the guy was risking his life for some pennies and doubted whether these risks were worth it. The main character also directly answered him that he would not have taken such risks if he did not need money. A mysterious stranger offered the hero a chance to get rich just by trying to play a safe game. Mistaking the mysterious figure for a fraudster, the hero refused to participate in the game and saying that he was not interested, simply moved on. Further actions take us to the hospital, where the main character communicates with his sister on the phone and reports that he bought her her favorite treat. A doctor approaches him, with whom the main character greets and tells him that he was looking for him. The doctor stops the main character and then asks whether the bills for his sister's treatment have been paid, because otherwise he has no right to treat her. The doctor also notes that the condition of the protagonist's sister is deteriorating and she needs a transplant as soon as possible and given the hero's well-being, it is worth preparing for the worst. The hero replies that he will collect the required amount, to which the doctor only sarcastically replies that he only needs to collect a few hundred thousand. The entire scene is noticed by the same stranger who was at the work site. Arriving at his sister's room, the main character thinks out loud about what he should do and where to find such a huge amount. Reasoning, he looks at his sister connected to a medical device. Unfortunately, she cannot give him an answer since she is not conscious, which is why he falls silent. The main character receives a call from his dad on his phone. Upon leaving the ward, the hero immediately reminds his father that he will not give him money, to which the father only says that it is pointless to treat his sister and that money can be earned by selling her organs after death. He also tells the hero that with the money he earns, he can easily go to school and he can have a great funeral for his sister, which makes the hero grit his teeth in anger. The hero angrily answers his father that he will not allow himself to be drawn into his adventures and harm his sister. Finally insulting his father, he cuts off the call, which did not bode well. Having recovered a little, he notices someone at the other end of the corridor. At the other end of the corridor, he sees a familiar figure, the same scammer from the construction site who wanted to offer to play him a game. The hero is surprised that this someone was watching him, and the stranger himself, raising his hand in a friendly manner, greeted him. Quickly approaching, the hero begins to ask why the stranger is following him and threatens to call the police if he does not leave the hospital as soon as possible. The stranger in response calmly informed the main character that he had misunderstood him. He was looking for him, looking only to offer to play a game with him. The rules were simple. If the hero caught him among three streets in less than five minutes, he would receive 100,000 as a prize. The main character responded to this proposal by calling the stranger a psycho and said that he would not fall for it so easily. Having said this, the main character also noted to himself that the logo on the stranger's clothes seemed very familiar to him. With a snap of his fingers, the stranger informed the hero that 20,000 of the prize money was already in the hero's account, and the remaining amount would be transferred as soon as the stranger was caught. The main character had strong doubts about the current situation, but out of curiosity, he still decided to look at his phone. On his phone, he saw a new message from his bank, and indeed, 20,000 had been deposited into his account at that moment and was surprised that the stranger had his card number. The hero turned to the stranger with questions about where he got his card number and what would happen if he refused to participate, to which the stranger replied that there was no need to return the amount. The hero never left the feeling that something was wrong here, but realizing that he already has the money and has nothing to lose in this situation, 
He agrees to participate. The hero said that he accepted the challenge, but even before he could finish speaking, the stranger jumped out the window, announcing that the countdown had begun and the game had already begun. Running to the window, he was very surprised because the stranger was already running away from him at the very bottom without receiving any damage. Although the hero understood that this whole situation was complete stupidity, at that moment he was aimed at only one thing, to take this money from the stranger. With brutal zeal, he rushed down the stairs of the hospital with the goal of catching up with the stranger as quickly as possible and getting the coveted amount. After just 30 seconds, the hero was already on the street and noticing the stranger rushed into the alley in which he saw him. The hero understood that while running after the stranger, he would not catch up with him. Therefore, knowing the surroundings, he decided to take a shortcut. He quickly found the shortest path and already in the second minute of the chase, he was very close to the stranger, but he still stubbornly ran away from the hero. Overcoming all sorts of obstacles, he tirelessly chased the treasured jackpot, but still could not catch up with the stranger. The hero ran at such a speed that he did not even notice passers-by who jumped out of his way at the last moment. More than three minutes of catching up had already passed, and finally the hero had closed the distance so much that he was literally breathing down the back of his target. But even so, the stranger did not slow down for a moment. He continued to run as fast as he could from our hero without a single hint of fatigue. No matter how stubborn the main character was, every time he approached a stranger, he eluded the hero and seemed to simply disappear. The hero himself already understood that he was at the limit, chasing the stranger with inhuman speed and endurance. Looking at his phone, the hero saw that the time was almost up, and at this rate, he would never catch up with him. Realizing that there are no other solutions, the hero continues to chase the stranger on the roofs of buildings. He, no longer paying attention to anything, rushes along the roofs of buildings in search of his goal. At the last moment, he breaks at the very edge of the roof, almost falling down. He was only one step away from falling from a great height. Out of breath, he looked around in search of a stranger. The stranger below still quickly ran away from the main character, not paying attention to anything. The hero doubted whether he should jump because the height was such that it was very easy to fall to death. Remembering his sister, he cast aside all doubts and rushed along the roof after the stranger. Having gained sufficient speed, he jumped without a doubt down towards the stranger. The hero flew straight at the stranger, with mere seconds left until the end of their chase. The stranger continued to run without stopping. Even in the very last seconds, he did not relax. The stranger believed that he had already won, and this feeling of victory was not sincere, because he expected that the boy would turn out to be a more interesting opponent. Literally one moment, and the main character is already behind the stranger at arm's length. The last throw and the hero reaches the stranger, managing to catch up with him at the last second. The stranger turns around sharply and notices with surprise that the main character actually managed to catch up with him. The main character, having grabbed the stranger, pulls him towards himself, shouting that he has caught up with him, solemnly declaring his victory in this pursuit. After a short period of time, our hero is trying to recover from this race, and the stranger is waiting patiently. The stranger acknowledges our hero's victory and dutifully transfers the remaining amount while informing us that there are still games with large fees in which you can take part. Despite the fatigue and pain from the abrasions received during the fall, the main character hears the words of the stranger and, still clinging to any opportunity to earn money, agrees without hesitation. The stranger only coldly accepted the agreement, and the hero only now drew attention to the mysterious face of the stranger, whose skin gave off an unnatural shine and whose eyes shone under the hood like two small light bulbs. Having examined the stranger's appearance in a little more detail, the hero was very surprised at what he could see. But before he could say a word, the stranger instantly found himself next to the hero, grabbed him by the wrist with cold hands, and put a strange bracelet on his hand. The bracelet turned out to be a device that, closed on the hero's hand, lit up, displaying the launch process, and also announced in a cold voice that the scanning of the player's identity had begun. Having finished, the bracelet announced confirmation of the registration of a new player, and at that very moment the whole world swam before the hero's eyes. Pain overwhelmed his head, weakness washed over his body, his eyelids closed on their own. Unable to stand on his feet any longer, he fell to the ground right under the feet of the mysterious stranger. After some time, the consciousness of the main character began to gradually return to him. Before opening his eyes, the hero felt that there was a disgusting stench all around that permeated the entire surrounding space. Despite the pain all over his body, the hero tried to get up. The smell of rotten flesh hit his nose, 
preventing him from breathing normally. As soon as his vision cleared a little, he immediately noticed a half-mutilated, rotten human hand. Having fully stood up, he noticed that he was in a room littered with mutilated corpses of people. One of the walls was a huge display with a timer. In the center of the room sat two small figures in sweatshirts, similar to the one the stranger was wearing, and the hero himself was dressed in some kind of sports uniform. A cold voice without any emotion announced to the entire room about the need to complete a task, the goal of which was to survive for five minutes, to which the two figures in the center perked up. Looking closely, one could see that they were two children who were wearing what looked like traditional makeup. The cold voice continued to announce that the game was about to begin. The condition remained the same, survive for five minutes. The hero was still tormented by headaches, but even so, he still noticed that a cold voice began to count down five seconds until the start of the game. Trying to recreate the events, the hero remembered the strange stranger who put a bracelet on him, after which he lost consciousness. However, he could not reason for long, because the picture that appeared before him knocked down all the thoughts that were in his head. Those two gnawed at human remains along with clothes, staring at the hero with many glowing red eyes. This sight shocked the hero, causing him to freeze in place, staring at this disgusting sight. The voice, having finished the countdown, announced the start of the game, after which the scoreboard immediately began counting down five minutes. As soon as they heard the announcement of the start of the game, the creatures immediately threw away parts of their bodies and aimed at the main character, baring their sharp, shark-like teeth. One more moment and the creatures are already rushing towards the main character with the only goal in their gaze, to kill him. The hero still didn't understand what was going on, but he knew for sure that nothing good should be expected from these two. Without even thinking, he ran away from these monsters, eager to tear him apart. While running from the creatures, he looks around the room for anything useful to his current situation. Apart from the display with the timer, the hero saw nothing in the room, and one of the creatures was already catching up with him. The second creature disappeared somewhere from sight, which the hero himself noticed. And just when he thought that the second one was nowhere to be seen, he appeared right in front of the hero, preparing to attack. The creature rushed towards the hero, swinging its hand in order to tear him apart. The creature's claws slashed the hero's shoulder, tearing his sweatshirt and leaving a deep laceration. A little more and the creature would have torn him in two. But even so, the pain radiated coldness through the hero's body. The second creature also made a dash towards the hero, but he deftly dodged it and avoided another fatal attack. The hero quickly noticed that these monsters were hunting together, chasing him down as if they were their prey. These creatures played with him, and their distorted faces showed true pleasure from what was happening. The hero was already tired of such catching up, and the wound only aggravated the situation. Time was also not on the hero's side because the test was not even half over. The creatures quickly regrouped, and one of them, having planted another, was preparing to launch it directly at the hero. With a powerful throw, one of the creatures threw the other with such speed as if it was a cannon shot. The hero simply continued to run away, but the creature flew at such speed that he was able to notice it only when it was already breathing down his back. The creature flew into his back with such force that he almost fell off his feet. It grabbed his skin with its pitch black claws, tearing the skin on his back. With her jaws open, she was already preparing to grab his throat with a death grip. Having leveled out, the hero noticed that the creature was preparing for the final blow, so he grabbed its hand, preparing to throw it away from him. One throw and the creature is already flying heavily in the other direction, splashing the hero's blood in different directions. The pain radiated throughout the hero's entire body, and the bracelet on his hand squeaked alarmingly. There was very little strength left, and there was still a little more than two minutes left. The hero continued to run away from the creatures, and they tirelessly pursued him, without showing a hint of fatigue. One of them nevertheless caught up with the hero and grabbed his fingers with her small clawed hands. The creature forcefully squeezed and pulled both fingers, effortlessly breaking them like dry twigs. In pain, the hero screamed at the top of his lungs. His fingers were so disfigured that they no longer resembled a normal hand and looked more like a bloody mess. The creatures were only amused and amused by the screams of the hero and he himself denied with all his being that he would die here and now. In unison with the hero, the bracelet on his hand screamed, informing him of the dangerous state of his health and demanding him to stop. There was only one minute left until the end of the game, but the hero no longer had any strength, which is why he began to choke as he walked. The only thing that has not allowed him to give up until now is the knowledge that the life of his beloved sister depends on him, and something happened in his last breath. 
A certain force informed the hero that he now has access to the system, to which the hero only wondered what kind of system it was. This same power informed that the hero had access to a new ability called Reverse, after which the hero's wounds healed in an instant and he no longer felt tired. The system reported that the essence of the Reversal ability was that once every 10 minutes, reaching a pulse of 200 beats per minute, the hero could see the movements of opponents for three seconds. The hero was completely confused about what was happening, but the race with death still continued, so he decided to try out his new power. For a moment, the whole world seemed to freeze, and the hero's body felt as if it were alien and moved on its own. Immediately, the creatures simultaneously rushed at the hero, preparing to deal him one fatal blow. They flew at the hero, plunging their claws into him and tearing off pieces of flesh with their teeth, filling the entire space around with blood. After that, the world and sensations became the same. The hero still ran away from the creatures, and there was not a scratch on him. Analyzing what he saw, the hero now knew where these creatures would attack him from and could give them a proper rebuff. The future that he was able to see with his new ability was repeated, and the creatures were already flying towards him. At the very last moment, the hero dodged, causing the girl to simply fly past the hero. The boy also flew past, looking sideways at the hero in surprise and at the same time angry, with only 10 seconds left until the end of the game. Although there was little time left, the hero still could not relax, because the game was not over and the creatures were still aiming to kill him. But even remaining extremely focused, the hero lost sight of the girl. She took advantage of this hitch and rushed at the hero, and he, in turn, again tried to activate it in reverse. But nothing happened since the ability was still on cooldown. The hero was confused and fell to the ground, and the girl was already flying at him to pierce him through. The game was over. Deathly silence hung in the air, as if this whole chase had never happened at all. The hero left this room a winner, ultimately ending up with only fatigue and fear. The hero walked and asked himself questions about what kind of place this was, who those children were, and whether they were children in general, whether these were the very games that the stranger told him about. Instead of answers, he only received a message from his bracelet that he had received a reward of 300 points. Without having time to understand the message, the hero came across an unusual room, which he decided to check. To his surprise, he found other people in the room, alive and dressed exactly like him. The room was quite quiet. The only sounds that could be distinguished were the hum of lamps and the muffled conversations of some people. A dark-haired guy drew attention to the main character and then informed the other that 20 more new people had arrived today. He was surprised that out of all 20, only the main character came into the room alive. In response to this statement, the hero only asked the dark-haired guy about who those creatures were and why they were so fierce. Instead of answering, the hero felt someone grab him by the shoulder. He was a guy slightly taller than the main character, with green dreadlocks and a bandana on his head. He asked the main character if he had fun at the first game, which only caused him bewilderment. Deciding to change the topic, he introduced himself as Caesar and said that he had arrived here half a month earlier and was the same player as the hero. Hearing this, the hero looked around the room again, paying attention to everyone sitting, and then asked why they were brought here. But instead of answering, the hero's new acquaintance suggested that they go and talk elsewhere. Having gone to another place, they continued the conversation, where the new acquaintance told the hero that he had also passed the five-minute test, and the hero tried to understand where they were. The answer was not long in coming. The guy with dreadlocks replied that they were in the arena, where deadly games were being held, and asked whether the hero knew about the time consortium. Hearing a negative answer, he explained that the Vremya Consortium is a huge technology company working on artificial intelligence. The hero remembered that the stranger who brought him here had the logo of this company on his back, but still did not understand what this company had to do with the arena. The guy with dreadlocks told him to pay attention to this, after which he pressed something on the hero's bracelet. Immediately after this, a small silhouette in the air began to form from the bracelet with a directed beam of light. The figure gradually became clearer and transformed into a small black doll wearing a red hat and a rose bandage on its stomach. This doll greeted the hero, after which she said that there were several conditions for playing in the arena and the first of them was play to survive. The second condition was that during the game, players would accumulate points and increase their levels, and the last player would receive the right to inherit the entire time company with its assets. There was also a basic rule that stated that refusing to play would result in execution. Having said this, the silhouette of the toy began to disappear, but finally she said that the bracelet could provide additional information for beginners. 
From everything he heard, the only thing imprinted in the hero's head was that if he wins, he will receive huge assets of the company. The information about the untold riches aroused doubts in him, which he expressed to his new acquaintance, to which he replied that he only knew for sure that it was incredibly difficult to become the last player. He also said that the game has a system of seven ranks, and they are currently at the lowest of them. The guy with dreadlocks stood up and headed in the other direction, simultaneously informing that in order to further advance, they need to continue playing and accumulating points to increase the level. However, the further they advance, the more difficult the games become. Approaching the vending machines, he began to clearly explain that points here are an analog of money, with which you need to buy food and water. He also said that every day everything is limited in quantity and there is not enough for everyone, simultaneously showing that the vending machine is completely empty. After that, the guy with dreadlocks turned to the hero and friendly advised him not to spend all the points at once, because as soon as they run out, he will be executed immediately. The hero was surprised at how perverted the rules were in this place and how dangerous the games were, and he also worried about his sister, who was left completely alone in the hospital. The hero asked the guy with dreadlocks what would happen if he refused and whether he could leave here. But before he could answer, exclamations from another player were heard from the side. Another player nervously tried to remove the bracelet from his hand, simultaneously shouting how this place got him. In response to this, the bracelet glowed red, squeaked alarmingly, and in a mechanical voice demanded the player to calm down. The next moment, the player was literally torn apart from the inside, leaving only a huge shapeless red puddle. The hero was stunned by such a sight and could not take his eyes off the spreading puddle of blood that had just been a living person. Surprised by the coincidence, the guy with dreadlocks answered the hero that he could not refuse the game because he would die if he refused. He also said that the hero must be mentally prepared because in the future it will only become more difficult. The hero was surprised that a fairly experienced player was so willing to explain the local rules to him, which he informed the guy with dreadlocks about. He smiled in response and said that he had seen the main character play live and was surprised, because initially he did not expect anything outstanding from him. The hero was surprised that other people's games were broadcast live to others, and remembering that the system helped him avoid death, he decided to find out a little more about it. Once again, he turned to his new acquaintance with a question about what system skills are, to which the guy with dreadlocks only questioningly said that he did not understand what the hero was talking about. At the same moment, the hero realized that only he knew about the system, and it was better not to talk about it for now. The conversation was interrupted by a speaker who announced that in half an hour the public area would be closed, and all those who did not return to the rooms would be executed. Hearing the alert, the players began to slowly disperse from the room, the guy with dreadlocks said that there is a daily schedule from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening. Outside of this time you must always be in the dorm rooms, after which he called the hero to follow him to the cell. Having no other choice, the hero simply agreed and followed his fellow sufferer. Arriving at the hostel, the hero saw that it looked more like a high-security prison. He told his comrade that he needed to figure out how to survive here, since there was no way to leave. His comrade was surprised at the calmness of the main character, which he directly told him about. He said it took him three whole days to come to terms with his current fate, after which they continued towards the hero's cell. Having reached the camera, the hero's comrade was surprised by another coincidence because his cell was located directly under the hero's camera. It was announced over the loudspeakers that there were five minutes left before the public area closed, so all players had to immediately return to their cells. The hero's comrade said goodbye and said that tomorrow he would definitely try to show him around. In response, the hero only mentally thanked him for telling him so much about this place, because thanks to this information, it would be much easier to get comfortable here. Without stopping too long, the hero opened the cell door and went inside. To his surprise, there were already four other guys inside the cell, three of whom were sitting on the floor in the center of the room, and the fourth was standing against the wall, leaning his back against it. The guys greeted the hero and said that he would sleep closer to the toilet. Already at night, when everyone went to bed, only the hero could not sleep and he lay immersed in his thoughts. He was still worried about his sister, and having decided to take his mind off thoughts about her, decided to familiarize himself with all the rules of this place. The hero activated the bracelet and, having found the section he needed with help for beginners, immediately opened it. The bracelet displayed a light display in front of him, on which the training appeared in front of him in the form of a small cartoon, where the narrator was an already familiar toy in a red hat. The toy introduced herself as Star, 
after which she began to explain that after completing the first game, all players begin to accumulate personal points. Every day at midnight, 100 points are debited from players' accounts as payment for accommodation in the arena. Those whose score is zero will lose the right to survive, as a result of which they will be instantly destroyed. The player's current level is the first and lowest. To get the second level, you need to earn 10,000 points, after which you can challenge the boss. This news did not make the hero happy, because for today's game, he received only 300 points, and later 100 would be deducted from him for accommodation. The announcer continued the story and said that the arena will place different monsters in each game to interact with the players. The games themselves will be divided into three difficulty levels, such as beginner, intermediate and advanced, and the reward for them starts from 300 points for beginner difficulty and above. Every day you need to play at least one game, otherwise you will have to pay a fine of 500 points or lose your life. After hearing this, the hero remembered today's game. The thought that he would have to deal with these creatures every day did not reassure him. He understood that if he wanted to survive, he needed to train and win every round. The hero's thoughts were interrupted by a system window that suddenly appeared, informing him of a new message. From such a surprise, he was confused and a little scared, but quickly came to his senses and opened the message. The system announced that it will help players by arranging time-limited training sessions for them, which, in addition to developing gaming skills, will also give players rewards in the form of additional points. The hero was very happy with this news, because in addition to improving his skills, he would also receive an additional reward, after which he immediately accepted the challenge to train. In the blink of an eye, the hero found himself in an empty but illuminated place, where no walls, no ceiling or anything else was visible except himself and the system window. The system said that in view of daily arena play, simulation training will be provided for players to improve their skills. After this message, a pair of monsters already familiar to him from the first game appeared in front of the hero, after which the system announced that the condition of the game would be to survive for five minutes, and in case of failure, an amount of 100 points would be deducted. The system also reported that the hero would not receive physical damage in the simulation, but even so, this night did not foretell anything pleasant. The very next morning, a guy with dreadlocks was looking for the hero in the room where they first met. He looked for the hero as soon as the common areas opened, but didn't find him in his room or anywhere else. Wandering around the arena, he assumed that the hero had gone to today's game, so he himself went to the venue of the games. The guy with dreadlocks reasoned out loud that the hero, under such loads, should have already suffered two strokes and died. His thoughts were interrupted by the silhouette of a player leaving the gaming room, and the silhouette looked very familiar. His eyes did not deceive him. He was a tired hero, calmly leaving the game room with victory. Having made sure that the hero had really left the room, the guy with dreadlocks, cheerfully waving his hand, greeted him, simultaneously calling him bro, which the hero himself immediately noticed. The guy with dreadlocks was very surprised that the hero left for the game so early, to which the hero replied that he wanted to quickly get to the local rhythm, although the main goal was actually to test the skills acquired last night. Remembering last night, the hero thought about how in the simulation he had to run from the same monsters as in the first game. Knowing that the monsters weren't real didn't help to get rid of anxiety completely, but it only helped to give it my all. But no matter how much the hero wanted to win and not get caught, the creatures were much faster than in the first game. As soon as one of the creatures got the hero, the game immediately ended with his loss, for which the system deducted a hundred points. The monsters themselves disappeared as quickly as they appeared, and the system announced that basic training would be launched. The hero was pleased with this situation, because he wanted to get at least some benefit for himself from these trainings. After a slight change in the environment, basic training began during which the hero honed the new movements that the system taught him. After many attempts and failures, he finally began to succeed and gradually mastered these techniques better and better. The movements became more and more refined and coordinated, and the hero himself began to feel more confident in himself. Having completed the training prescribed by the system, the hero immediately found himself in the room in his bed and discovered that outside the simulation, the time was still the same, and he spent no more than one second in it. He definitely spent a lot of time training, as evidenced by the fatigue in his body, but apparently time passed differently in the simulator. Remembering all this, the hero was convinced that the training was working and would really help him improve his skills. The hero's thoughts were interrupted by a guy with dreadlocks, inviting him to go with him on the promised inspection of the surrounding area. The hero, instead of following him, stopped the guy, wanting to ask him a question. 
With a completely calm tone, he asked his friend if he could take part in more than one game. The question shocked the guy with dreadlocks, because of which he even doubted the hero's sanity. Because the more you play in one day, the more difficult the games are, which he directly stated. He still doubted that anyone could handle more than one game a day, and a guy passing by said out loud that he didn't understand how the hero hadn't died yet. What was said only provoked the hero, because the higher the difficulty, the greater the reward, and with the acquired skills his chances of winning were extremely high. The hero passed by a friend and said that if you play once a day, the points accumulate for too long and he himself is not too tired yet and is ready to play again. The guy with dreadlocks was extremely amazed at how arrogant the hero was, because he had already survived the deadly game twice. The hero walked to the next game alone, watching how other players were preparing for their games or recovering from games they had already completed. Having reached the right place, the same huge metal door stood in the way of the hero, behind which a new game was already waiting for him. The bracelet on his hand confirmed that this game was the second level, and it would be more difficult than the previous one. The hero was in no hurry to go in, although the system was already inviting him inside, he stood and thought whether he should take the risk. At that moment, another player rushed out from another room, he looked shabby, and his suit was heavily stained with stains of fresh blood. Not having time to run too far from the door, he fell back, after which he crawled back, closer to the open door to rest his back against it. The hero took a closer look and saw that this player did not have a right hand and several fingers on his right were missing. The hero was surprised at how the guy got it and he was also wondering what game he took part in that mutilated him so much. Recalling the night's training again, he noticed that the morning game was much easier for him than the first time. The door opened in front of the hero and the hero himself thought that the game should not be much more difficult than the previous ones. He remembered once again that he needed to earn as many points as possible, which made all self-doubt disappear. Having lost all remaining doubts, he went into the dark room towards a new deadly game. Inside, instead of the usual room, a completely different picture appeared before the hero, because the entire floor consisted of narrow paths, under which there was an abyss above a pool with an incomprehensible liquid. The hero was very surprised by such changes in game conditions, because now the conditions of survival were completely different. The pool below haunted the hero, because the transparent liquid below was anything but water. Without having time to think carefully, the conditions for the upcoming game were announced, namely to survive for five minutes and kill at least one monster. The hero was very surprised by the conditions announced, because even just surviving was already a very difficult task but now it was also necessary to kill one monster within the allotted time. The system advised to beware of pools with sulfuric acid, thereby making it clear what exactly was at the bottom of the room, and the monsters themselves were already taking a closer look at the hero. The system announced the start of the competition, after which the monsters without hesitation rushed towards the main character with animal ferocity. The creatures were noticeably faster than before, so one of them quickly overtook the hero, at the last moment, the hero dodged the blow, causing the creature to simply fly past him. Having dodged, the hero immediately ran away from the creature, but the second one was already trying to overtake him from the other side. It was very difficult to run along the narrow paths, because if the hero stumbles, a deadly pool of sulfuric acid will await him. This is what the hero cared about most, since the monsters, called gargoyles, were not as dangerous as the acid below. The gargoyles eagerly chased the hero and, as a result, were able to surround him, blocking the paths in several directions. The hero decided that the best solution would be to jump over the abyss, because now he needed the experience that he gained in night training in the simulation. In the blink of an eye, he jumped from his spot to another walkway, avoiding the fate of being sandwiched on both sides by gargoyles. Finding himself on another bridge, he saw that a little more than one minute had passed from the game, but since the goal this time was also to kill the monster, the hero began to think about how he could defeat one of the gargoyles. Without a weapon at hand, he did not understand how he could get rid of dangerous creatures without bathing in acid. And at that moment it dawned on him that one of the threats could be eliminated with the help of the other. At the same moment the gargoyles, like the hero, jumped over the abyss, rushing at him. With a deft movement, the hero again dodged the blows of the gargoyles, while thinking over a plan to kill one of the creatures using his ability. By simply dodging, he wasted precious time, so the hero tried to activate his reverse ability. Unfortunately for him, the ability was not activated because the necessary conditions were not met. The hero's pulse was below 200, which is why the ability could not be activated. Not knowing the trajectory of the gargoyle's attacks hindered him, 
and did not allow him to at least somehow counterattack, so he simply continued to avoid other people's attacks. The hero remembered that last time the pain from severe wounds helped him raise the level of his heartbeat. One of the gargoyles was preparing another attack towards the hero, so he decided to try to expose himself to attack. The creature pierced the hero's hand right through, causing severe but not yet fatal injuries. Pain rolled through the hero like a roller, causing his heartbeat to speed up very quickly. The gargoyle pulled its paw out of the hero's hand, splashing his blood around. The hero's heartbeat accelerated more and more, and he himself, with his hand dangling, continued to avoid new attacks from the gargoyles. Having reached the desired state, the hero was finally able to activate his ability. He saw in advance how the gargoyles would attack him, from which he could now take advantage and counterattack. The hero was extremely concentrated on what was happening, because he knew that he had only one chance for a successful attack. He noticed for himself that gargoyles have a tendency to kill the enemy by hitting their claws in the face of the victim. Therefore, the moment when the creature attacks will be the best time to counterattack. The creature rushed at the hero, raising its paw for the final blow, but the hero, instead of dodging, began to fall into the pit with acid. The creature flew behind him low enough to strike a fatal blow, which the hero had foreseen with his ability. As soon as the gargoyle flew close enough, the hero regrouped and kicked it as hard as he could in the opposite direction from the bridge. The kick sent the creature straight into the pool of acid, where with a powerful splash the gargoyle flew at great speed. The acid immediately began to corrode the creature, which was screaming heart-rendingly below, with no way to get out. After wallowing a little in the acid, the gargoyle sank, and one of the tasks was completed. The hero himself hung on the bridge on his good arm, somehow holding himself up and trying to catch his breath after a very dangerous somersault. He understood that if something had gone a little wrong, he would now be the one who would gradually dissolve below. With difficulty, the hero climbed onto the bridge, where the second gargoyle looked in surprise at how her brother had just been killed. Although one of the creatures was defeated, the hero still needed to survive for more than two minutes. The resulting wound continued to bleed and hurt terribly, which caused the hero to doubt that he would be able to continue. Everything was swimming in the hero's eyes, and his head was aching, making it difficult to concentrate on anything. The hero thought that this was the end for him, but at that moment the system intervened, informing him that an improvement in the reverse skill to the second level was available. The skill could be greatly improved, but the cost of improvement was 300 points, which was a serious amount for the hero at the moment. The hero's current number of points was 400. Purchasing an ability now could greatly harm him, but also improving the skill could help in the current game, since with his wounds the hero will not last long, and an improved ability is the only winning solution at the moment. Realizing that there was no choice, the hero confirmed the skill update at his own risk. In addition to general improvements, the updated ability, when successfully dodging all attacks, increased the hero's movement speed for two minutes. As soon as the system updated the hero's ability, he immediately activated it. At the same moment, the second gargoyle was already flying towards the hero, preparing another attack with its claws. Thanks to the ability, the hero successfully dodges all the creature's attacks, predicting all its attacks in advance. Having successfully dodged all attacks, as promised by the system, the hero received a temporary boost. The hero's body began to feel very light, which made dodging the gargoyle's attacks even easier. Dodging another attack, the hero rushed in the opposite direction from the gargoyle, literally reaching the other end of the room in an instant. The gargoyle growled angrily and grinned at the hero, looking at him with sincere hatred and a desire to kill. The hero understood that at such speed it became incredibly easy to evade the creatures, and if he had not been wounded, the creatures would not have been able to keep up with him at all. The hero finally realized that the system really wants to help him, so acquiring skills will now always be a priority for him, even if he has to spend most of the points on it. The gargoyle did not give up trying to catch up with the hero and deal with him as cruelly as possible. There were only 40 seconds left before the end of the game. The hero and the gargoyle stubbornly continued to play deadly catch-up. The best solution, according to the hero, was to simply continue moving as quickly as possible and avoid enemy attacks. This game showed the hero that these creatures are no longer scary to him, and he can move on. Time was up. The game was over in favor of the hero, as announced by the speakers in the room. They also reported that the main goals of surviving for five minutes and killing at least one monster were successfully completed. For completing a two-star game, the hero receives a reward of 500 survival points. The hero was required to leave the room and return to the public area, after which the speakers went silent.
Already in the common area, the hero sat and treated the wounds received in the last game. Bandaging his broken hand, the hero talked about the reward he received for killing the second gargoyle, which he did not expect to earn at all. An additional reward was a double points card, which allows you to get a double reward for completing one game. Also, to the hero's surprise, the medicine in the arena turned out to be quite cheap and cost only 20 points for a fairly large set. The hero's thoughts about the cheapness of local medicines were interrupted by the rumbling in his empty stomach. The fact that he was very hungry was not surprising, because he had not eaten anything at all since yesterday. In addition to hunger, the hero was also worried about the question of where his friend with dreadlocks was disappearing, because he himself promised to meet him after the game. Realizing that he most likely will not find his comrade on his own, the hero puts the medicine back in the medicine cabinet and decides to buy himself something to eat. Already approaching the machines, the hero was noticed by another player who was able to recognize him. This player thought that the hero was extremely arrogant, since he only appeared in the arena and was able to pass two tests at once on the first day. Quickly putting all the facts together in his head, he assumed that the hero, after winning two games in games, should now have a lot of points. The hero went to the vending machine to buy something to eat, but discovered that food and water were much more expensive than medicine. And besides, all the food had already been taken away. Once again, the hero was convinced that it would be difficult to survive here, and for his own benefit, he would have to take on even more difficult games. Tomorrow he should come here early to buy food and not be hungry again. Suddenly, a player approached the hero with two of his friends, who had just passed by him. But the addressee certainly did not look like a person from whom one should expect a peaceful conversation. Slyly making fun of the hero, he made the hero understand that by coming here at this time, he would never be able to buy himself any food. The guy with a shaved head noticed that the hero was only 18 years old, and at that age he definitely wouldn't last long here, to which all three began to laugh loudly in unison. Seeing and hearing them burst into hysterical laughter, the hero couldn't find anything to say to them except to ask if everything was okay with them. Hearing what the hero said, the trio calmed down a little, and the main one among them noticed that the hero was quite hot-tempered. Taking out a couple of packages of cookies, he began to invite the main character to buy them, offering one package of cookies for 400 points. The hero was very surprised at such prices, because in the machine itself, you could buy one package for 80 points. Realizing that the price was too high, the hero refused such a dubious offer. Hearing such an answer, the trio began to sigh sadly, simultaneously approaching the hero, literally squeezing him. The hero, realizing that trouble was brewing for his head, directly asked what the trio wanted. The leader of the trio came close to the hero and wrapping his arm around his neck, said that he should buy cookies to leave. And he also said that the hero had better be friends with him so that the trio would cover him every day. In his opinion, by playing two games every day, the hero will have enough points to buy cookies from him. The hero understood where things were going and that if he did not stand up for himself now, then these guys would never leave him behind. The leader suddenly laughed and then said that if the hero refused the purchase, they would have to break one of his limbs. He continued to voice his supposed justice, saying that the hero was arrogant and did not respect those who were stronger than him. It was impossible for them to kill the hero according to the rules of the arena, but inflicting non-fatal injury in the arena is not prohibited. The shaven guy was flexing his fists, saying that it was time to beat the hero since he did not agree to the purchase, to which the leader stopped him and began to explain the function of the bracelet as trading. He explained, bringing the bracelets to each other. They can transfer their earned points to another player, after which, patting the hero on the cheek, he gave him a final warning. The hero was irritated by the current situation, and if there was only one bully, then the conflict would have already been resolved. Without saying anything, the hero raised his hand, which had a bracelet on it, and the bully, seeing this, immediately began to offer his own. A message appeared on the bully's bracelet asking for information about the exchange. The bully, smiling arrogantly, praised the hero, saying that he made the right decision by deciding to give away his glasses. But before he could finish speaking, the hero's fist, whose bracelet was not even active, flew straight into the bully's arrogant grin. The hero hit the bully with such force that he, unable to maintain his balance, fell to the floor. Having fallen, the leader was very confused, and instead of saying anything, he could only cough up the blood that was pooling in his mouth. The hero, standing over the main bully, clearly explained that he was not going to transfer any of his points to them. By his actions, he hoped to raise the morale of those around him and discourage these bullies from robbing others, because what was the point of earning points if such idiots would take them away? Because of what happened, the main bully completely lost his mind. 
because now he wanted to kill the hero with all his body and soul. Rising, he shouted that the hero should be killed immediately, after which the other two bullies immediately rushed to carry out the order, and onlookers quickly began to flock to the fight. Standing aside, a guy with dreadlocks saw this whole scene, but instead of interfering in the conflict, he decided to simply observe. The bullies were already flying at the hero, but he didn't even think about being a coward, because he understood that the system clearly chose him not because he would chicken out over such a trifle. Regardless of how many people or monsters attack the hero, he believed that there was always a chance of victory, which he proved by his actions by knocking down one of the bulls. The hero understood that if he simply dodged, he could strengthen himself with the help of abilities, but the shaven big man took him by surprise. He was an order of magnitude stronger than the other two, and his blows felt quite painful, even if you managed to block them. The healthy bull grabbed the hero by the wound and, laughing triumphantly, told his comrades that he was wounded. He deliberately pressed the hero's wound with his finger, mockingly laughing and enjoying the moment. At the same moment, the leader of this vile gang was preparing to attack the hero from behind, raising his hand back to strike. The leader hit the hero on the back, causing him to escape from the grip of the shaved bull and fly to the side. From such a blow, he crashed into the wall with his back at full speed. The hero's whole body ached in pain. The gang stared at the hero sitting against the wall, grinning and snarling in his direction, not forgetting to insult him in every possible way. The leader ordered his sycophants to grab the hero and hold him tightly so that it would be easier to break his leg. The big man immediately headed towards the hero, simultaneously flexing his fists and saying, deciding which leg to break. The hero's body felt as if it was falling apart from pain and fatigue, but even so, the heart rate was not sufficient to activate the ability. The bull was almost there, the hero couldn't believe that he was still so weak, but even if that was the case, he couldn't just give up. Gathering his strength, the hero jumped up in front of the shaven bull, but he had already raised his leg to attack. At the same moment, the hero's ability was activated. He was able to see how the bull breaks his leg, causing the hero to fall heavily to the floor. The hero saw every single movement of the bull in advance, and now nothing prevented him from dodging. Having dodged, the hero activated the bonus speed improvement and knocked the brute down with a quick sweep. The brute fell heavily to the floor, and while he was flying, the hero managed to regroup and was already right above his opponent. One precise blow, and the thug is already stuck face first into the floor, and the hero is still standing on his feet and holding the big guy. The floor was cracked from the impact, and the thug lay there and sincerely did not understand how the hero became so fast. The hero let go of the thug and was preparing to attack the leader, but he got ahead of him, and shouting that this couldn't be so, rushed towards him. The bully tried to hit the hero, but he managed to dodge the attack in an instant, hitting the attacker with his inhuman speed. Having parried the blow, the hero, without thinking twice, counter-attacked the offender, kicking him right in the head. Due to the speed with which the hero moved and struck, the bully could not dodge or parry this attack, so he flew heavily to the side and fell to the floor again. The bully didn't understand how such a frail little girl could put all three of them down at once, but unable to do anything else, he simply lay on the floor. Having found a little strength within himself, the bully was able to roll over on his stomach, while the hero looked at the defeated bully with indifference, but quickly broke the silence, deciding to remind the bully of his own words. The hero wondered aloud what to do with the offender, break his leg or fracture his skull. The bully was loudly indignant at what was happening. He yelled at the hero, informing him of his immunity, and also threatened him that he did not know who he was messing with. The bully continued to shower the hero with insults even when he was in a very disadvantageous position, to which the hero walked up and raised his leg over him, preparing to make the final blow. The bully, realizing the situation he was in, stopped pouring out insults and replaced them with a plea to be released. The hero struck, but deliberately missed, kicking a couple of centimeters from the head of the bully, who, covered in cold sweat, thought that he was already finished. The hero directly told the bully that revenge was not worth violating the rules, for which he himself could lose his life. Because the bully took a lot of effort and time, the hero took his cookies, commenting that this was compensation for the harm caused to him. The guy with dreadlocks was also watching this whole picture, amazed at how amazing the hero was, but for his own safety, he decided not to call him over for now. The assembled onlookers were amazed at how a local celebrity, along with his retinue, was defeated by some newcomer without any fear of consequences for himself. The hero left the room, and the bully remained lying on the floor, cursing the hero and promising him to remember what just happened. After some time, already in his cell, the hero was eating trophy cookies, 
thinking about what he could now expect from this bully. However, the hero did not worry about this for a long time, even being a little happy about the outcome. At the same moment, the bracelet on the hero's hand notified him that his rating in terms of points earned had changed and he had moved higher on the leaderboard. The bracelet did not lie. According to the table, the hero took 276th place, and in total, there were 324 players in the rating. Having found out what place he was in, the hero became interested in how many total points the first place has at the moment. Flipping through the rating, the hero was surprised that even before reaching the first hundred, he already saw that the players had more than 5,000 points, but the one who took first place had 7,720 points. However, this did not surprise the hero as much as the fact of who was in third place on the leaderboard. In third place was a guy who was painfully similar to yesterday's bully, but moreover, his last name was exactly the same as this same bully. Various thoughts greatly puzzled the hero. He began to understand what the bully meant when he shouted that it was better not to mess with him. Realizing that empty speculation will not help the situation in any way, the hero decides that it would be best to now find out more information from his friend. The hero remembered that his friend with dreadlocks lived in the cell below, so he went down, knocked on the door, and asked to call Caesar. The guy with dreadlocks came out a minute later and told the hero that he saw everything that happened, and also asked the hero whether the liver was normal and how he was feeling in general. Without waiting for an answer, the guy with dreadlocks immediately told the hero that he was now in great danger, because the third place and yesterday's bully were siblings, and revenge was already a matter of time. However, the hero, without showing any worries, only asked his friend if this guy was strong, which took third place. The guy with dreadlocks confirmed the hero's words, but noticed that it was the power in the hands of the third place that was the more dangerous force. The overall situation was that the top 30 players were divided into three teams that competed in advanced games and held a general monopoly on food at their level, selling it to newcomers at inflated prices. The friend continued to explain that it is thanks to them that newcomers can survive and not be killed in advanced tests, because the two brothers will clearly come up with something mean for the hero. The fact that the hero got into trouble with these brothers greatly spoiled his plans, however. Before he said anything, the guy with dreadlocks remembered that he had not played today. He said goodbye to the hero, finally telling him to find him if he there will be more questions for him. After finishing the conversation, the hero thought about it and came to the conclusion that he needed to continue playing and become number one so that no one else would even think about messing with him. Three days later, the hero was getting ready for the next game and his roommates stood aside and silently watched him leave the room. As soon as the hero left the cell, his neighbors immediately began to whisper and wonder how he was able to earn more than 2,000 points in just a few days of being in the arena. One of them suggested not to pay any attention to the hero and not to contact him since he could get them into trouble. The hero walked away from the camera and reasoned that that bully no longer bothered him, which seemed strange to him. But at the moment, he was concerned with more important matters. To quickly gain points, the hero forced himself to play two games a day, which greatly raised him in the rankings, and with 2,180 points he was already in 191st place. Training in the simulation greatly helped the hero, improving his physical performance and allowing him to pass the main test without any difficulties. The hero was also worried about where he was, but since there were no windows or doors and the time of day was only simulated, it was impossible to understand. During his stay, the hero was able to discover that in addition to common areas and bedrooms, there is a gym and a bathhouse, which can only be used for points earned. The feeling of time gradually left the hero because five days had already passed since he entered the arena and only games and growth helped him feel alive. While reasoning, the hero did not notice how he came to his goal, namely to the room located behind the middle level game. A huge translucent door appeared before the hero on which chains and the grinning face of a demon were depicted. The hero brought his bracelet to the door, after which it immediately announced that he met the requirements of the intermediate level test and could go further. At the same moment, the chains on the door began to move, unraveling in different directions and gradually completely disappearing along with the door. This test required players to have more than 2,000 points to enter, greatly increased the difficulty, but in return allowed them to participate in it as a team and not one at a time. The bracelet also announced that you can enter the game with random players or invite your friends for 100 points, which the hero remembered. The hero chose a game with random players and ran further, and the bracelet notified him that after participating, 
he should enter the intermediate room within five minutes. Otherwise, he would be prohibited from participating in other games for the rest of the day. Having reached the right place, the hero discovered that only one person was assigned to him as an ally. Coming closer, he was able to examine this man, and to the hero's great surprise, his only ally turned out to be a girl with long, dark hair, and at the same time, in another part of the arena, that same bully was angrily telling his brother about what happened to him a few days ago. Although he talked about not wanting to bother his brother after playing a few games on high difficulty, his true feeling at the moment was the hero, who in his opinion, acted completely unfairly. The bully continued to stick to his line, trying to prove to his brother that the hero harmed not only him, but also his brother, taking away the cookies, for which they were obliged to take revenge. The bully's brother continued to listen as he finished lifting the weights and sat down, revealing his scarred body and a snake dragon tattoo on his back. One of the henchmen standing nearby gave him a towel, and after he had wiped the sweat from his face, he spoke to his brother, saying that he doubted the hero's desire to covet his supplies. Having finished drying himself, he turned to his brother and said that they should still teach the hero some manners. At the same time, the hero and his ally for the upcoming game in the form of a girl unknown to him were still waiting for the start. The hero introduced himself first, thereby breaking the awkward silence that hung around. Without turning around, the girl introduced herself in response, calling herself Joanna, after which she immediately coldly informed the hero that it was time for them to start the test. The hero was very surprised by the presence of female players, which he told her directly, taking off the hood of his sweatshirt. The hero's partner still coldly told him that men and women live in different areas of the arena and meet only in intermediate tests and advanced games. The girl was very surprised by such banal questions from the hero, suggesting that he had just started playing and was completely inexperienced. Both players received a notification on their bracelets about the need to confirm the start of the game. At the same time, the hero thought that it was impossible to guess how strong a random ally would be, but girls who can survive in such conditions should definitely not be weak. Having confirmed the game, the girl started it, as reported by her bracelet. The gate opened, and standing at the very entrance, the girl turned to the hero, asking him not to get in the way, after which they went inside, and the system confirmed their participation in the game. The room inside was completely different from those that the hero had ever seen, and was a room in a traditional style, where the walls and decoration of the room were made of wood, rather than the usual metal and concrete. Having walked a little further, the hero and his companion were able to see what they would have to fight with in this game. Three figures appeared in front of them, silhouettes reminiscent of people, but two of them were much taller than people, and it was clearly visible that these were two mannequins covered with metal sheets, and the third was almost half as tall as an ordinary person, but dressed in a robe that completely hides the body, with the company symbol already familiar to the hero on the cloak. This figure stood silently in the center, between two mannequins, with its back to the players, however. If you look closely, you can see that thin red threads came from it, connecting to all the limbs of the dolls. The monster turned around, and a face appeared in front of the players, which looked more like a red mask in the form of a skull with sharp rows of shapeless teeth, and from the eye sockets, instead of eyes, brushes protruded, from which lines came. The girl noticed in a calm tone that the creature definitely looked like a puppet. There was not a hint of fear in front of the creature on her face. The puppet bowed to the players, inviting them to start the game. The mannequins nearby stood in more threatening poses, showing that they were ready for battle. The hero was surprised by this behavior of the monsters, but the girl quickly explained to him that until the game starts, they will not attack. An announcement was made about a minute's preparation for the game. The players had to face a one-star challenge of medium difficulty, the goal of which was to capture the item on the puppeteer's belt within 20 minutes. The reward for the game was equal to 1,000 points per person. A special condition was to take one of the two dolls from the puppeteer's belt, but only one was correct, and a random penalty would be imposed for taking the wrong one. After this announcement, the countdown immediately began. The hero was surprised by the inaccurate condition of the task, because there were no signs by which one could distinguish the right doll from the wrong one, to which the girl only said that they first need to get closer to the puppeteer and only then figure it out. As soon as the countdown ended, the mannequins rushed towards the players at breakneck speed, drawing the blades of their swords. The hero warned the girl to be careful, and she in turn rushed away, shouting to the hero her intention to distract the mannequins. A dummy with a long sword swung at the hero, 
but at the last moment he was able to avoid the attack and dodge. The sword slammed into the floor with a roar, crushing it and scattering fragments in different directions, one of which damaged the hero's clothes and left a ragged scratch on his arm. The hero said out loud that he didn't like this situation at all, but at the moment he had no time for indignation, but needed to avoid attacks, otherwise he would be finished. The girl encountered a mannequin armed with sharp, one-handed swords, with which he chaotically chopped the air around her. One of the blows almost caught her, but only cut off a small clump of hair. The monsters were faster than she had expected. Having coordinated, the mannequin delivered a slashing blow with both swords, which the girl deftly dodged by jumping over it. The hero also continued to elude the dummy with a long sword, with which he chaotically hacked at everything that came in his way. Avoiding the blows, the hero continued to think about how to get rid of the puppets, because they were preventing them from getting to the puppeteer to pick up the doll from his belt. The hero's heart was beating wildly from fear and stress. The situation felt deadlock. He did not know what they could do. What caught the hero's eye was the scene of the girl dodging the mannequin with a jump, which impressed him very much because she was really good at the game. The puppeteer was not distracted from the battle for a second, and outwardly it seemed that he was genuinely enjoying what was happening. The dummy with two swords quickly regrouped and was already preparing to strike the girl, who was still in the air. The dummy jumped towards her and was already preparing to pierce her with both swords. It seemed that their game was about to end. At the last moment, the girl managed to dodge and the sword stuck into the ground next to her. After successfully dodging, the puppeteer was clearly in front of the girl and nothing stood between them, so she set her sights on tearing the treasured doll from his belt. The hero noticed that she was preparing to rush towards the puppeteer, so he began to get very worried because she could easily make a mistake by snatching the wrong doll. Stopping to hesitate, the girl rushed towards the puppeteer, deciding as she went which of the dolls she needed to grab. She rapidly shortened the distance to the target, and the puppeteer in turn did not even think about moving to the side and simply stood still. She got close enough to look at the puppeteer more carefully, but unfortunately, until now, it was not clear which of the puppets on his belt was correct. The hero was very worried by the fact that the puppeteer was so easy to get close to him. It seemed to him that something was clearly wrong. For a moment it seemed to the hero that the threads loosened a little and tightened again, causing the puppet with two swords to twitch unnaturally. Sensing something completely wrong, the hero shouted to the girl to be careful, because the puppeteer was preparing a new attack unknown to them. The girl responded and also noticed the unnatural movements of the puppet she had just run away from. The next moment the puppet broke into several parts and at breakneck speed its upper parts flew towards the girl. The girl was shocked that the puppets could separate, but not having time to fully understand the situation, she began to turn around to face the parts flying towards her. She quickly pulled the tied sweatshirt from her belt and put it in front of her, shielding herself from the blow of the sword flying at her. By wrapping the hoodie around the sword, she was able to deflect the puppet's blow to the side without receiving any damage. Her sweatshirt was torn to shreds from such a blow, and the other two parts of the puppet were already preparing to attack after, increasing the intensity and pace of the battle. The other part with the second sword rushed at the girl just as quickly, preparing to attack with another slashing blow. The puppet flew past the girl, spraying blood and slamming the blade of its sword into the floor. The hero saw this whole picture, and although he was worried about his partner in misfortune, he could not help her in any way, because he himself was in a dangerous situation. The girl was clearly lucky, because the blade passed tangentially without hitting vital organs or limbs, only cutting her clothes and leaving a deep wound. The hand of the puppet, which had torn the girl's sweatshirt to shreds, twitched and was preparing to deliver a fatal blow. The hero noticed this movement and understood that if he did not intervene, then his partner would now face the end. The hand instantly shot out in the direction of the girl, thrusting the blade forward in the desire to deliver the final blow. The girl was still sitting on the floor, unable to dodge. Although the wound was not fatal, it was difficult for her to move from the burning pain and shock. Fortunately for her, the hero was completely fine, so he ran into the hand, hitting it in the opposite direction, thereby saving the girl. The hand flew off towards the puppeteer and the torso of the dismantled puppet, and the hero, turning to the girl, asked if she could hold out a little longer. She nodded, and after she was able to come to her senses, she stood up and silently stood with her back to the hero. There were 14 minutes left before the end of the game. The puppet gathered back, and together with the second, they surrounded the hero and the girl, not giving them any space to retreat. The girl thanked the hero for warning her. Without him, she would most likely already be dead. 
The hero did not respond to this gratitude, but said that he had plans and noticed that the puppeteer himself, unlike the puppets, was not physically strong. He also noted that the game was clearly designed for two, so it was in his best interests that the girl be alive and capable. The girl shouted to warn the hero because one of the puppets threw his swords at them. The knives flew past, almost hitting the players. The girl turned to the hero, trying to understand what they should do to win. The hero's plan was to turn the puppet's swords against the puppeteer and cut his strings, thereby completely disarming him. The girl was not delighted with the plan, to which she sarcastically noted that the puppets were in no hurry to help them, to which the hero simply told her to make the puppet with two swords run to the left. The hero will lead the other puppet on the string so that at the right moment they can cut the strings with a sword. After they deal with one puppet, they will have to run after the doll, because the remaining puppet will not interfere with them. Having expressed his plan, the hero dodged the puppet's attack and ran towards the second puppet, luring the first. Having avoided another blow, the hero shouted to the girl to freeze for a few seconds, because they could not allow the puppet to separate. The hero closed the distance more and more, and the second puppet mindlessly rushed after him, preparing his long sword for an attack. Having reached the threads, the hero jumped over them, and the puppet pursuing him struck him. The blow did not reach the hero, but cut the threads in two, thereby breaking the connection between one of the puppets and the puppeteer. Having lost contact with the puppeteer, the puppet collapsed with a roar at the feet of the girl, who did not believe that their plan had worked. The hero continued to avoid being hit by the still-moving puppet and reminded his partner that they still needed to get the doll while they could. Avoiding all of the puppet's attacks, the hero was able to get close enough to the puppeteer himself to rip the doll from his belt. The hero reached for the puppeteer's belt in eagerness to tear off the toy and finish the test, but was immediately stopped. The puppet they had just defeated pierced through his right shoulder. The hero was shocked at how quickly the threads were restored. Although the hero was stopped by the puppet, the girl at that moment was already able to get around the puppeteer and was preparing to attack him from behind. To help her, the hero grabbed the largest puppet and tried with all his might not to let it escape, shouting to the girl to hurry up. The torso of the second puppet rushed towards the girl who was already reaching for the puppeteer who was zealously trying to escape her grasp. Having made the last jerk, the girl finally tore the toy with the letter B from the puppeteer's belt, after which everyone froze. The puppets and players froze, but instead of declaring victory, the loudspeakers announced that the girl had grabbed the wrong toy. The girl stood and looked at the toy, which glowed red, but the system continued the notification and reported that as punishment for taking the wrong object, the toy in her hands was about to explode. The system continued and said that the hero has two choices. Continue the game, and if successful, save everyone and earn a thousand points, and if unsuccessful, explode or leave the game, dooming the girl to certain death alone. The hero was puzzled and began to weigh all the options, as well as guess what conditions they were in. The girl could not throw away the doll, it literally stuck to her hand, but the system still reported that the hero needed to make a choice. The hero did not want to condemn the girl to death. Besides, escaping meant a very big loss in points for him, but he didn't really want to risk his life for a thousand points. A serious advantage was that there was only one doll left, and there should not be more fines. However, another negative factor was that the puppet strings were restored too quickly, so it was impossible to fully rely on the plan of cutting them. Wounds greatly slowed down the hero, so the chances of victory were increasingly inclined to zero. After weighing all the pros and cons, the hero nevertheless came to the conclusion that it was better to try another time and finish the game. Realizing what the hero was going to do, the girl asked to wait for him and offered him her trump card, which she held for last in the form of a bonus card. She drew attention to the fact that the hero had most likely already encountered hidden bonuses. So if he continued, she would give him this card, with which he would be able to complete even more difficult dungeons. To prove it, she opened a window in her bracelet, revealing that she did indeed have the bonus of being able to purchase a gun. The hero's temptation to stay and continue playing has become noticeably greater, because such bonuses are obviously very difficult to find. But although the temptation was great, the risk of exploding still remained which the hero informed the girl about, however, in order to definitely convince him to stay, she offered to do anything for him if he stayed. The system kept repeating that the hero must make a choice, but having decided on what he needed, the hero demanded 500 points from it after completing the game. He was completely serious in his intentions, so he warned the girl that if she did not give him these points, she would greatly regret it. The answer she heard greatly pleased the girl, and she again repeated that she was ready to give the hero whatever he wanted if he stayed. 
The girl's further plan was to capture one of the puppet's swords and further use it against them. However, now, instead of cutting the threads, they attack the puppeteer's hands, since the threads will be restored too quickly. Getting rid of the puppeteer's hands ensured that the puppets would no longer pose a threat and they would be able to win. The girl's life was at stake and she was ready to do anything to win and survive. After agreeing on the plan, the hero confirmed the continuation of the game, as a result of which a three-minute timer was started, after which the entire room was supposed to explode. Three minutes was a very small amount of time for such a test, and besides, the puppeteer had definitely changed his tactics, so it would now be very difficult to dodge. The puppets covered the puppeteer, thereby showing that they will now defend themselves rather than attack, which greatly complicates the task for the hero and his partner. The girl doubted the plan, because if she failed to take the knife away from the puppet, they would simply set themselves up and die. In response to this, the hero turned to a nearby lamp, and if the main plan failed, offered to set them on fire with a torch from this lamp. The hero told the girl to take the torch, and if everything doesn't go according to plan, they will have time to react to it. Having finished the discussion, the players rushed in different directions. The girl rushed for the torch, and the hero rushed around, preparing to attack the puppet. The hero's heart was pounding wildly. The puppet rushed at him, raising his sword above him for a powerful blow. But this time the hero was not going to dodge the attack, but to hit her first. He jumped straight onto the puppet and with one strong knee strike was able to split it into three. The hero's heart was beating wildly and had already reached the required speed, so he immediately activated the skill. He saw in advance all the possible attacks of the puppet and could easily predict its further actions. The puppet struck with all its parts at once, but the hero avoided all attacks without receiving any damage. The puppet's sword was very close to cutting its own threads, but the puppet still managed to stop and avoid an unnecessary cut. The other limb flew up, preparing to strike the hero again, but that was exactly what he needed. The hero shouted to the girl to run to him as soon as she could get the torch. A girl with a torch in her hands was waiting for the necessary command to provide support to the hero. Hearing the hero's words, she rushed along with the torch in his direction, to which the puppet with a large sword reacted and also rushed to attack her. Dodging the attack, she threw the torch with all her strength towards the threads that connected the swords of the other puppet and the puppeteer. The torch rolled along the ground and stopped exactly at the threads, setting them on fire and immobilizing one of the puppet's arms. Without wasting time, the hero grabbed this hand and tore the sword out of it. At the same moment, the condition of his skill was fulfilled, from which he received a bonus to speed for two minutes. Preparing for a counterattack, the hero asked the girl to hold the puppet with a large sword while he dealt with the puppeteer. The hero rushed towards the puppeteer with incredible speed, which made the girl very surprised, because until now he had been moving noticeably slower. The puppet, missing an arm, tried to attack the hero, but with one arm she did it very uncertainly. In addition to the puppet's clumsiness, she was also hampered by the enormous speed of the hero, who had already entered her back and was swinging to deliver a fatal blow. With one swing, the hero cut the puppet's body lengthwise, thereby completely destroying this part of the puppet's body. At the same moment, one of the puppeteer's threads returned to retrieve the sword and use it against the hero. The thread was very strong, and it was impossible to simply tear it with your hands. The puppet with a long sword, completely forgetting about the girl, rushed towards the hero, preparing to attack him. At great speed, she flew up to the hero until he could not normally wield the sword in order to finish the battle with one blow. The hero did not know what to do in this situation. Therefore, after analyzing all possible options, he was going to throw the sword. However, without having time to make any decision, the girl attacked the puppet, which greatly confused her, giving the hero a chance to attack the puppeteer. The hero seized the chance and cut the thread that was pulling the sword, after which he immediately rushed towards the puppeteer. Almost instantly, he found himself directly in front of the puppeteer, preparing to deal him the decisive blow. One quick swing of the sword and the puppeteer's severed limbs were already flying in the opposite direction. The second puppet fell with a crash, and the time on the timer froze at 21 seconds. The girl froze in trepidation, glancing at the hero. The hero stood next to the corpse of the puppeteer, triumphantly raising the toy into the air, indicating that the game was over in their favor, which was confirmed by a mechanical voice from the speakers. They won and earned a thousand points, but also, the hero did not forget to remind his partner about their agreement. She, in turn, was very glad that they survived and were able to win, simultaneously informing that she would give what she promised and at the same time share information about the connection between the weapon card and the advanced game. 
At the same time, high-ranking players were preparing for an advanced game in the arena gym. One of his subordinates arrived at the third place to receive from him a task for which he himself does not have time right now. He said that they were going to an advanced game and asked if the subordinate knew why they were not taken with them. Without thinking too much, the subordinate assumed that the reason was the third place brother's recent fight and the theft of his cookies. The third confirmed the subordinate's guess and clarified that without him his brother was nothing and could only get into trouble every day. But even if this was so, he was still his brother. In order to prevent what happened to his brother in the future and preserve their dignity, they needed to get rid of the hero, because otherwise they would continue to be ignored. Without hesitation, the subordinate, who was Chuck, the seventh-ranked player, agreed to complete the task. All in the same room where the hero almost flew into the air with his new acquaintance, they were now peacefully closing the agreement in front of each other. The girl explained to the hero how the exchange system works and why exchanges take so long and with so many stages, also asking him if he was hiding his power. The hero replied that this was not entirely true, and ahead of her further questions, reminded her of the weapon card that she had promised him. In response, the girl only puffed out her cheeks, grumbling that she didn't like to take it out unless the situation required it. But the hero continued to bombard her with questions, now asking how this card is connected to the advanced game. The girl continued her explanation. She said that weapons were not publicly available on this level. Many tried to find them here, but it was unsuccessful. Someone managed to take weapons from monsters, but according to the rules of the arena, it is forbidden to take them outside the room. After the girl was able to obtain the card, she happened to discover that the weapon had always been in advanced games, but most did not know about it, and only a select few had access to it. Having finished the explanation, the girl offered to cooperate in the future and team up to play games together because he knew a lot of information that was useful to the hero. The hero agreed to this arrangement, after which they said goodbye and went to their respective arena buildings. During the intermediate test, the hero was badly battered and at the current level of his skills, it will be difficult for him to play two tests a day. However, this was not what worried the hero now, but how much other people's attention was focused on him right now. From the moment the hero left the game room, some other player followed on his heels. He slowly followed him, gradually closing the distance and at the same time not allowing himself to be detected. Having gotten close enough, he loudly greeted the hero, after which he began to choke him until he lost consciousness. The hero woke up already suspended on chains in the gym after being doused with a bucket of cold water. Opening his eyes, he saw that before him appeared the bully he already knew and an even larger number of his subordinates than before. The hero believed that he got caught because he was not careful enough after leaving the game, which is why he was now hanging, surrounded by this gang of bullies. The seventh stood aside and said that he overestimated the hero and considered him more influential, given his fame and arrogance, because the hero never noticed him when he followed him after the test. Realizing that he had nothing more to do here, the seventh left the gym, finally reporting that the hero was now completely at the disposal of the bullies. The hero continued to hang on the chain, but understood that he needed to somehow get out of this situation. The leader looked at the hero and said that he had heard rumors that the hero was able to overcome the intermediate test and quickly accumulate points, which made the hero seem pathetic to him in his current situation. The hero answered him by saying that he was so pitiful that without someone else's help, he could not find the hero and figure it out personally. The bully instantly became enraged and was already preparing to attack, which is what the hero needed from him. The bully swung and was about to hit, but the hero was able to kick him earlier, causing the bully to stagger. This blow greatly angered the bully, and he called his minions to him to hold the hero. But at the same moment, he wrapped his legs around the bully's neck and grabbed him. The hero tightly squeezed his legs around the leader's neck, after which he threatened everyone around him that he would strangle him if they approached even a step. He demanded to be released from the chains, simultaneously squeezing his legs more and more tightly, from which the leader's eyes turned red and he gradually began to lose consciousness. The subordinates did not know what to do, so they simply watched what was happening. Unbeknownst to the hero, the leader gave a signal that his subordinates were able to notice and understand. One of the subordinates climbed up to the chain fastening and on the count of three was about to unhook the main character. The hero understood that they would not let him go so easily. Therefore, as soon as he jumped down and quickly took off his chains, he again captured the leader with them. He continued to hold the chain around the bully's neck, remembering that he had already tried to cripple the hero twice and he couldn't let him go so easily. Subordinates surrounded the hero, waiting for the most advantageous moment to attack, 
While the leader continued to scatter threats towards the hero, the hero told the leader directly in his ear that he just wanted to take part in the games and all the blame for what was happening lay solely with them. It was impossible to allow this idiot to interfere with the hero over and over again, so it was clearly necessary to do something with him. At the same moment, one of his subordinates, armed with a barbell, rushed from behind at the hero. The hero pushed the bully away and dodged himself, as a result of which the vulture only hit the floor with a loud sound. The bully ran to the side and promised the one who grabbed the hero to give three packages of cookies as a reward. The bully with the bar continued to swing it, trying to somehow hit the hero. Dodging another chaotic attack with a vulture, the hero hit the offender back with his fist. The blow landed on the bully's chest, breaking several of his ribs and knocking him out. Without having time to react, the hero received a blow to the head with a vulture from another bully who attacked the hero while he was fighting off another. The vulture cut the skin on the hero's head, causing him to bleed, but he was not taken aback and using the chain on which he had just hung, hit the offender right in his face. The third bully also swung the bar at the hero, but he managed to avoid the blow and dodge. The hero jumped back in order to avoid a fatal blow, which surprised one bully, and the second was on his knees and covered his face with his palms because of the pain. There were too many opponents, and the hero felt that he could not cope with the situation. But if he wanted to become the best, then he needed to learn to cope with this. The hero's heart beat fast enough, and therefore he activated his ability, after which he rushed into a frontal attack. Thanks to his ability, he saw the movements of every enemy he noticed and had no problem avoiding their attacks and counter-attacking. Like lightning, he avoided attacks and one by one knocked out his opponents with precise blows. Although the gang was defeated, the leader was still able to enter the hero's blind spot and attack him with a barbell projectile that came to hand. The blow hit the hero's leg, pain spread from his leg throughout his body, but in the heat of battle he was able to suppress it. Rage overwhelmed the hero, filling his eyes with blood and allowing him to ignore the pain from his wounds. Screaming with anger, he grabbed the leader by the hair and then slammed his face into the floor with tremendous force, knocking him out. The hero stood over the lifeless body of the bully, shouting in his direction that he was the one who tried his best to cripple him. He looked at the bully with hatred. He remembered his own words to him that the hero could not survive, and therefore he had to cover his back. At the same moment, the hero managed to notice one of the recovered servants, who again attacked with the bar from the bar, but the hero was able to stop this blow with one hand. The hero looked at this sycophant with hatred, simultaneously asking why he wanted to die so much, but the guy himself shouted to his men to carry away the leader. The guy was interrupted mid-sentence, because the hero struck him on the head with dumbbells, causing him to fall to the floor unconscious. One of the servants grabbed the leader and rushed to run away, shouting about what a terrible hero he was. The hero tried to stop him, but terrible pain radiated throughout the hero's body, preventing him from moving even a step. In pain, the hero collapsed to the floor, after which he discovered that his leg was broken, and it was surprising how he could still not only move, but even just stand. But most importantly, he did not understand how he could move on in such a state. After some time, in the room where the hero lived, Two of his neighbors were mentally preparing to go to participate in the games, which did not suit one of them. The other one only swore at him in response to these complaints, rudely telling him to shut up, after which the door to the room loudly swung open. It was a hero who, with a broken leg, somehow managed to get to the room. The guy who was more aggressive grinned at the hero, wanting to attack him, but the other one stopped him, advising him not to get himself into unnecessary trouble. Silently agreeing, the aggressive guy left the room, saying how unlucky he was to live with the hero and the second one left after him. The hero sat on the floor and silently thought about what to do next, because with a broken leg, he would not be able to participate in games and his balance would not be enough for a long time, because every day he would be charged 500 points for inaction. Out of anger, the hero pounded the floor with his fist, not understanding how he managed to get here in the first place. His mind flashed back to fond memories of his sister, who was still there in the hospital and needed his help. He blamed himself for being so greedy, which is why he ended up here in the arena. However, he also saw the positives in the current situation, because his bank card remained with his sister, along with the bonus that he had earned by playing tag with a stranger before getting here. This should have been enough to pay for medical services, but the hero still did not understand why he was so dissatisfied, because he finally had hope. At that moment, the hero remembered his first game when he fought with gargoyles and they broke his fingers, but in the end he turned out to be completely alive and well, 
Although similar situations did not happen again, this memory gave hope that all was not lost and there was hope. The hero decided to check system messages and alerts, where he learned that new system powers were available to him, which he immediately wanted to learn more about. The system notified the hero that such a function as a shopping center for beginners had opened. Having quickly weighed everything, the hero realized that the store opened as soon as the hero had accumulated the required amount of points. Looking into the functionality of the shopping center, the hero discovered that not all of the functionality was available, but what was available sounded no less useful. While looking for something that could help the hero right now, he came across the physical recovery section, where he was able to find a medicine for a thousand points that could heal serious injuries within six hours. With some doubts, the hero nevertheless decided to buy the capsule, because if he didn't try, he wouldn't know if it worked. Immediately after the purchase, a small capsule appeared in the hero's palm. It looked unusual and seemed to emit a small, scarlet glow. Hoping that the system had provided him with a panacea for his fracture, the hero swallowed the pill whole. It was not clear what exactly affected the hero, the medicine, or general fatigue, but after taking the mysterious pill, he immediately fell asleep. Somewhere in another room of the arena, the bully and his minions were licking their wounds. The leader sat and proudly recalled how the main character's leg looked after he hit him. One of the singers confirmed his words, saying that he saw the hero dragging into the room like a beaten dog, after which he reminded the leader of the agreement about cookies. The leader grinned and reminded them that it was he who broke the hero's leg, while they showed themselves worse than he thought about them. The thought that the hero could now only hide in dark corners awaiting death amused him greatly, causing a disgusting grimace to appear on his face. Having had enough of it, he told the minions to bring the meat that his brother had brought, because they deserved it. After a lot of time, the hero came to his senses in his own room. He felt as if he had slept all day, and his leg was numb. Thinking about his numb leg, he immediately noticed that it was fine, and there was no more fracture, as well as other injuries on his body. At the same moment, the system notified the hero that his daily training was about to come to an end, and if he did not complete it, his points would be deducted. The hero was just glad of the training, so he immediately went into the simulation, where he recalled that he had seen a tab for weapons and their hardening in the system store. Before buying a weapon, the hero wanted to accumulate points, but due to the fact that the bully did not give him a quiet life, he had to buy himself a means to fight for his life, otherwise he would be killed so quickly. The hero activated the card for the right to purchase weapons, after which the system notified him that he now had permission to purchase weapons and further use them, which meant that the hero would now be at a completely new level.